Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Matt Chat, episode 470, and let me ask you something. Uh, how cool will it, would it be if you could <laughs> play Neverwinter Nights and I have the Beholder at the same time? <laughs> you know, that sounds pretty fantastic to me. And uh, thankfully, as you probably guessed already from the fact that there's a video like this, somebody has actually made that possible. Mr. Rick Francis, working with a small team of uh, like-minded fans, they've created a mod, a community mod, for Eye of the Beholder, Neverwinter, <laughs> based on Eye of the Beholder from uh, Westwood back in the day, uh, for Neverwinter Nights, uh, the game that came out in 2002. And Beamdog have been working with this uh, engine for a while, updating it, uh, and they've uh, integrated those community patches, so <laughs> all you got to do if you don't already have Neverwinter Nights on Steam, or I don't know if it's on GOG or not, probably. Uh, but within the, uh, you know, you just blow it up Neverwinter Nights, you go to the new game, you click on uh, modules or community, and boom, you're good to go. You can download this with one click, and you're playing Eye of the Beholder, uh, Neverwinter Nights style. Uh, I was really intrigued by this, obviously. wanted to jump in. Uh, so that's what you're getting in this video. I'm going to I've already played the uh, multiplayer a little bit, so we'll talk about in this video. But uh, in this video, we're just looking at the solo experience. About the first uh, two hours or so should give you a pretty good taste of uh, uh, what's to come. And see if it's something that's right for you or not. But I definitely think if you're a fan of either one of those games, Eye of the Beholder or Neverwinter Nights, uh, this is something you definitely want to check out. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Eye of the Beholder mod for Neverwinter Nights. <laughs> oh, what the heck is up with this? Eye of the Beholder Enhanced Edition campaign. Where has this game been all my life? I mean, apparently this came out a while ago. It just went, somehow got right past my radar, uh, which is tragic. You know, he's already moved on to part two, Legend of Dark Moon, got that completed. So anyway, better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rick Francis. <laughs> All right, let me back up a little bit. My God. Uh, so what I'll be looking at here today is this remake of Eye of the Beholder, classic CRPG done by Westwood, uh, published by SSI, also called the Black Box Games. You might have played Pool of Radiance, Curse of the Azure Bonds, all those. Uh, and then at some point, I guess when those got a little bit long in the tooth, uh, Westwood comes along, puts it into a... Uh, Dungeon Master style format, basically the first person perspective, a lot more uh, more action, uh, grid based movement, you know, classic dungeon crawl. I think they sometimes call those uh, bobbers or blobbers or something. I don't use that term, but anyway, <laughs> uh, that's what we're talking about. Fun, fun, fun. It's hard to have more fun than playing those original games. But you know, it's you know, it's uh, not for everybody. That format, obviously, uh, you know, is is a uh, a bit dated now so you might want to play something different maybe you like the story the uh, the intensity of that experience and you want to see what would that game feel like if it was in a Neverwinter Nights you know uh, third person isometric point of view all the bells and whistles from the uh, Neverwinter Nights game engine and the, and the rule set uh, Aurora engine you know all that good stuff what would that look like well you don't have to just wonder anymore <laughs> Because uh, Rick Francis here has gone to the trouble. It's, it's an amazing achievement for any, this period in my opinion, but especially for, you know, modders doing this basically uh, on their free time for, for nothing, just out of uh, sheer love of the game. And I, I tried to learn more about Francis, or uh, Rick, I guess. I did find this interview here on GameSpot. You know, it, it could be that he doesn't want to bring too much attention to himself just out of you know, fear of the copyright police, I don't know. Uh, but he does talk in here about some of the problems that he had making the game, some of the challenges he overcome. He talks about the uh, team, and I wanted to just mention them since I don't see them mentioned anywhere else. Somewhere here that he talks about 
Yeah, the team. And I think, I don't know if all these people worked on this game, or this might be talking about the second game. But then you got a Jeff from Australia, a Jenny Person, Person maybe, from Italy, Jean Prine from Germany. They worked on tile sets, and he's got a Rolo Kip, Daniel Stierheim. Those are from the U.S. And then he's got some beta testers here. Uh, so a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of folks chipped in. But it sounds like Rick did the majority of the work. And by the way, Rick, if, I don't know if you're watching this <laughs> or somebody knows Rick. You know, man, I'd love to have you on the show. My goodness, bud. So uh, if you're watching this, get in touch with me and we will set that up. Because, you know, you'll get probably get some attention here from this video. But <laughs> I think people want to, you know, see what you're like. You know, see what kind of guy put all, put all this together. Uh, just and while I'm on this page, by the way. Uh, there's some other community mods there's they're highlighting here and I mean this stuff is just it's it's amazing I mean when did this game come out when did when did Neverwinter Nights one come out anyway <laughs> I'm gonna have to look this up I'm pretty sure it's like 2000 and something how old of a game is this yeah pretty close 20 oh 2002 right what's going on here yeah, 2002, so I was about right. So this is a... God, can I even do the math? <laughs> uh, 2002. 19, almost 20-year-old game. And look at all this activity. I mean, people are still making mods for this. Not just like little crappy, you know, kill the Smurfs. Uh, you know, kill the kill my sister. <laughs> you know, that kind of uh, nonsense. I mean, actually, real life... Uh, commercial quality mods. I mean, if these games had come out back in the 2000s, I'm sure they would have been hit games. You know, right up there with uh, Eye of the Beholder. But he's got a whole... Or Beamdog has put together a bunch of these here for us. There's this Island Saga. I mean, look at all the pieces that go with that. And there's an Auron Saga. And Cult of the Reptile God, which I believe this one is uh, yeah, another... Classic AD&D &D module adaptation. So a lot of people are having some fun doing that. And I'll just say this, you know, I've worked a little bit, just tinkered around with this Aurora tool set, and I believe there's some other mods uh, that you can use. Some mods of the modding systems, or some other construction kits if you want to make a game. For the Aurora engine, uh, I, I think it's relatively simple. It's one of the better ones. And the games that you make are modern enough, you know, to where I think somebody's with a bit of a brain, <laughs> a little bit of gray matter, <laughs> you know, be able to get past the, you know, limitations and, and just really enjoy the game. It's a really good place to hone your uh, level design, storytelling, you know, all that stuff uh, is there, you know, for you to tinker with. So we're going to be taking a look here at this Eye of the Beholder game today. And I'll, maybe, I might come back. I'm very curious about Cult of the Reptile God. I'm, I might have to come back to that at some point. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the game. Okay, so I'm going to go to new. Now, one of the things he does mention, and by the way, uh, it took me a little while to find this, so I'll just quickly cover this. So when you go to new, it'll start you off here on this official page. And these are all great. You know, some people don't like the classic campaign so much. Uh, Hordes, of the Underdark, Hordes of the Underdark is considered a classic. Uh, one of the best, you know, CRPGs ever. Uh, you got all this extra content. But what we want to do is click on the community I'm actually not sure what premium is. What's a premium module? I guess that's what's maybe you have to pay for those. I don't know. Uh, but we want community. And just click Eye of the Beholder and start. Let's see. A little bit of text there. From Kelvin. <laughs> that's nice. He probably took this from the manual. 25 to 30, and I've already covered the original Eye of the Beholder game back in the day, so uh, I'm not going to cover all the story and stuff for this video. I just mainly want to get into this uh, this adaptation and see if it plays as well as the original. Now he does say here that it's multiplayer, and I've been playing it with my buddy uh, Jeff. Uh, it is a, it probably is more fun to play it in co-op mode. You know, it's originally got four characters right in the party. So I'm not even sure how well I'm going to do with the one character. Uh, we're going to try it out and see. Yeah, maybe we'll survive. 
Uh, but it probably would be more fun with a friend, especially if you have a friend that's played the original game. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the new character. Just, to me, half the fun of this is creating a character. All right, gender, we'll go male. Race, let's do a good old-fashioned dwarf. Portrait. You know, some people have all kinds of extra portraits added. It would be kind of cool to have some of the uh, portraits from Eye of the Beholder in here, because they did have those little portraits. You could probably add that if you were really wanted to. Let's see, this guy... Yeah, this is kind of what I'm thinking of here. <laughs> well, I bet you he's glad he's got that shield, huh? Okay, then we got all these options, and this is kind of fun already, you know, just thinking about playing Eye of the Beholder with one of these later classes that weren't available in the original game. Uh, I kind of like playing a uh, cleric, or maybe a paladin, because if you know this game, you know, it's just full of undead. <clears throat> you know, and having some abilities that, uh, like, turn undead would be great, so I might just go straight up cleric. Remember with this series too, you can always mix and match, do a little cleric, do a little paladin, do a little fighter, you know, you can mix and match, it's relatively easy. Uh, alignment of course will be, no, not lawful, neutral. <laughs> lawful good. <laughs> I know, it would be kind of fun to play as a chaotic evil character. I'm not sure how big a difference it would make uh, in Eye of the Beholder. Let's go lawful good though. Yeah, it's got you know, full-on summer swing outside, so we've got all kinds of allergies. Somehow they make their way down to the basement. <laughs> uh, allergies. All right, abilities. And for clerics, I like to go with some strength, a little bit of dex. Constitution is always good. Wisdom, probably where you want to put most of your points. Let's see what else I can do here. I would really like a little bit more strength. Now the crap the thing I never liked about this system is it only works, you really only get a benefit if you do uh, even numbers. So I guess putting like one point in the dex isn't going to do anything for me. You have to put it up to uh, 12. Let's go with a little bit more con. You know, it doesn't really matter how strong you are. If you're dead. Okay. Packages. <laughs> Check out my package. Default cleric. You know, I've never really played around with these. I guess this is like a, a cheap way to put a little bit more class in. A few more classes in. Hmm. These... Packages do not give any special abilities to your character. They simply configure your skills and feats so you don't have to. No, well, that's that's dumb. That's half the fun. <laughs> All right, skip that. I guess go with yeah, go with default. <coughs> Customize. Hello. <laughs> Look at the eyebrows on this guy. Yeah, that looks like my friend Chris there. Uh, do we want a tat? Uh, a, which of these? Yeah, you see what I mean about this. You know, the aura, in, <laughs> the graphics are certainly dated. <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe these used to be like really cutting edge. But you know, this is serviceable. You know, you can certainly make a good, an attractive character, put a little personality into it. Why don't we change the hair color just to? There we go. <laughs> Get on them! Attack, I say! To your weapons! And by my direction, attack! We got our voices. Get on them! Attack! At attack! I say attack! <laughs> this is so much fun. I say attack! Pious scholar, archer. You know, quite a bit of. You know, a lot of options here. To your weapons! And don't let up! Attack! I kind of like the way that sounds. 
And you can generate a name, but the problem with this is I got so many characters on here. Uh, I could go with that last name, I guess. <clears throat> you want to just come up with a name you can remember. Otherwise, it'll get. Deity. Enter name of deity. Really? The Twinkie God. <laughs> oh, yes, the Twinkie God. Okay, everything looks good. Let's play. All right, I already see a beholder. Let's look at our journal. There's a commission letter. This document is a binding commission of service to the Lords and Sovereign City of Waterdeep. The bearers of this document are agents of the Lords of Waterdeep and are granted full rights of passage beneath the city of Waterdeep. Any who would dare interfere risk the full penalty of our wrath. Information has been presented to us that there is a plot afoot in our city. Evidence points to the sewers that run beneath Waterdeep. Of course they do. Everything, everything exciting is always happening in sewers, people. That's why you got to get into those sewers ASAP. We commission you to find the nature of the danger and to destroy it if you are able. <coughs> You know, any, any CRPG that doesn't at some point have you wallowing through the sewers isn't a real RPG. You know, let me just put it that way. Uh, this writ is made legal and right. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Blackstaff. Okay. And there we go. <coughs> See, Billy, the entrance beholder. Oh, Billy. Hello and welcome to the Eye of the Beholder. Soon you will enter headlong into a dungeon full of wonder and foes. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, I'll get back to you. <laughs> Come on. Sounds great. Okay, then. First things first. Make sure everyone you intend to play with is currently logged in and in one party, i.e. your party. Well, too bad. I'm going to just be soloing this for this video. All right, then, as soon as you respond yes to this conversation, the game will begin. The cutscene will begin ten seconds after you say yes. This is to allow ample time for all players with slow connections to load the area and see the entire scene. Is it? Hey, you know, isn't Billy a great entrance beholder? Man, he, he's just the best. Let's see what kind of cutscene they put together for this. Should be interesting. I must report if I am to please Jaluk. The entrance should be unguarded, yet. Well, well. My sleep darts will take care of this sleeping fool. Pathetic ribble. Oh, that was quick. Easy as slaying Roth for a festival. I can't believe that was the renowned. What are deep? Gotta read quick. <laughs> Royal guards all speak of with such fear. No, what's that? Foolish. Foolish trial, did you really think you could escape undetected? Ah! You underestimate Waterdeep's vigilance. A cursed wizard? You shall suffer for that old man. Still in denial, I see. I, a fool never learns. Don't mistake you out. Like a rebel magic old me. I not told you. I will not toy with you any further. You are beaten, tough elf. Give up your foolish attempts to escape. Commander Alton! We'll reboot. We shall interrogate him in the lower dungeon. Guards, take this intruder to the dungeon and prepare him. Yes, sir! You interfere in events? <laughs> okay. Okay, I mean, you gotta be a quick reader. Oh, never mind. We could, we could scroll back. So all that was, was recorded here in this little... What do you call this thing? A notepad? So let's see what, what I missed there. You interfere in events you can't possibly imagine, well, wizard. You shall see. Should probably get consistent with all my voices. But anyway, that was the we got a draw assassin, captain of the guard. I guess we're not supposed to know exactly what this dark elf was doing. 
kind of a little bit of a prologue, a little bit of foreshadowing. Okay, then we get to level up already. I think it said you start with level two. Now here's what I'm talking about. We could go with another level of cleric, or you could say, you know, I'll take one level of paladin, make like a paladin cleric hybrid class, or you could go for straight fighter. You know, however you want to slice it, it's it'll work with you. But I was having a pretty good time just uh, sticking to clerics. I'm just going to stick with that. Now here's uh, an interesting option. So the ones with class skills, you can level up easier than the ones that are where there's no class skill. Like I can't even level up. I guess I could. Yeah, that's a class skill. Yeah, see, if I try to log uh, level that up, open lock, I'd have to have another point. Um, so as always, you know, some of these are more useful than others. You know, parry might be useful. The thing about this game, I just happen to know almost everything you find needs to be identified. So it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and start working on this lore skill. Okay. And then we've got to learn our spells. So this does use that old uh, slot system. I don't think I need a light because I'm a dwarf. And then we've got some first level spells here. Well, you do a lot of cure light wounds. Again, no, I'm sure I'm going to be taking a lot of damage. Uh, let me see. One of these. Yeah, I like the ones that last 24 hours or last an hour because, you know, it's a pretty good prep spell just to have on you. Oh, let's see. What is Entropic Shield? I don't know. That lasts one turn per level, so that's basically one battle. Uh, what is magic weapon? I think that's a plus one enhancement. That does last an hour. You know, I always, I always get confused with this spell. Like, does it have to be a normal weapon and you can only get a plus one on it? Or if it's already a plus one, do you get, does it go to plus two? You know, I always have to look that up. Uh, protection from alignment is one that lasts for hours. That's good. And then a uh, summon creature is going to be vital. And when I get another slot, I think I'll get a shield of uh, faith because that's just so useful for AC. So let's see if we can rest here. Yep. And then after that pops, we'll have to get this situation figured out here. Got a mace. Okay, look at my... That's a, my perfect weapon for... Rat attacks. Studded leather armor. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no vendors. Oh, hang on, maybe we can... I don't remember if there's any vendors here at the start or not. But I know later on in the game, you just end up with tons of stuff and there's no place to sell it, so you might as well just drop it or not pick it up. But what I want to do is take those spells and put them onto my, my hot bar here. And if you hit... Shift key, it'll give you some other ones, and then control will give you some other ones. And I think that's it. Yeah, so you get, you know, a decent number of these bars. Just put all your most common ones here. I don't really need mace there. Empty that. I don't think I'll put that on there either. Let's see. Can I... I'll put undead here. Let's see, where is a cleric? A little bit tricky. Once you get the hang of it, it's okay. And I think I can just click and drag these over. You just have to be careful not to accidentally cast the spell. Let's bring the cantrip there. There, there. And then these other ones. My prep spells. I can always move these around later. Wait, I miss one? Protection from evil and their elements. Protection from alignment. Oh, that's weird. Changed. <clears throat> and it looks like I've got a couple potions of recall. This holy symbol is kind of cool. It's got some spells built into it. Remove fear, prayer, and aid. I don't know if I have to have it. Yeah, it looks like I don't even have to have it. Uh, 
equipped to work. Let's try it real quick. Yeah, it does say you have to equip it. So I'd have to you know, take the shield off, put that on. Let's see, does that holy symbol do anything besides... No, it's, it works like a torch. Okay. So that's, you know, it's a couple extra spells. You know, pretty good item to have. But I'd rather have a shield. <laughs> yes. Pigurans, Pierre Girons daughter. You see a beautiful young woman. Hello. She's talking. <laughs> I'm not listening, apparently. Greetings, cleric. My father, Pierre Girard. Yes, we get it! Uh, the paladin's son awaits you in the council chambers. Thank you, my lady. Oh, that was a pivotal character. Greetings and welcome. <laughs> okay, what? Moving on then. This should be of interest. Danilo Than. Well met. Thank you, Danilo. Please come forward, speak with me for a moment. I must speak with you. You notice they're using this sort of built in uh, voice clips, I guess, uh, from the engine. Like the thank you and all that stuff is. You, uh, if you make a game with this engine, you can use those professional uh, audio samples. See, thank you for coming on such short notice, Matt. I have summoned you here today for a very important task, one of the utmost importance. Are you interested in hearing more? No. <laughs> Find someone else. <laughs> you know, I just want to see what happens if you say number three. This is very disappointing indeed. We had high hopes for a hero such as yourself. Your reputation is clearly not deserved, Matt. If this is your final answer, then please take the door behind you to leave. We shall search. We shall search. <laughs> We shall search for another who is up to the challenge. I'm sure you will find someone else. Are you sure you won't change your mind? <laughs> On second thought, you are right, my lord. Please forgive my lack of judgmental. Well, you know, it looks like there's going to be some typos in this game. Oh, well. Thank you for understanding, Mutter. Not Deacon again, I hope. Oh, I knew you were no kobold. It was unbecoming of you. <laughs> I am Pugeron, the Warden of Waterdeep and Commander of the City Watch. And to my right is Danilo Than, a former adventurer and now a mentor to the Lords of Waterdeep. It's nice to meet you. Now well, something just happened. Uh, your meeting with the Lord of Waterdeep is suddenly interrupted by Calvin Blackstaff teleporting in. Calvin, glad you could make it. Oh, wait, this is still Pierce Run. Calvin, glad you could make it. Sorry I'm late, my lord. There was an urgent matter that required my immediate attention. I wonder why they call him Blackstaff. This is Matt Shy's Dirk. He has answered our call for help and will attempt to seek out the evil that has befallen our great city. Matt, this is Kelvin Blackstaff, Mystic Advisor and Archmage to the Lords of Waterdeep. So you, do you say Archmage or Archmage? I'm going to say Archmage. It's a great honor to meet you, Kelvin. <laughs> Sorry, never heard of you. Are you important or do you just think you are? <laughs> what an ass. <laughs> Let's do the ass. Uh, you, as I must. you are either a fool or the court jester. Either way, you have the manners of an orc, young man. I shall overlook your rudeness this one time only. But do not press your luck with me, or you shall find yourself a guest in our dungeon. The smug look on your face changes as you realize your foolishness may get you into more trouble than you bargained for. Forget my rudeness, sir. I was just having a bit of fun. It won't happen again. You have a singular wit, Matt. Perhaps you would prefer spending a few hours milling about as a badger. <laughs> so you could think about your lack of judgment. You know, that'd probably do us all some good. You know, spending some time milling about as a badger. I know a lot of people out there, probably including you, who could benefit from some time milling about as a badger, but we shall move on. Uh, now I believe Lord Piergeron has some important information for you. Or do you have something else you wish to say? 
<laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, we could challenge him further. As a matter of fact, I do. I don't think you have it in you. In fact, I doubt you even know how to cast the spell, old man. <laughs> even if you do. <laughs> oh my God. Even if you do. Oh. All right. Even if you do, you need a lackey pass from your Lord Frigeron to even consider it. Oh, Lord. You know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of curious what would happen, but I don't want the game to be over before it begins, so we'll do the first one. Let me begin by, by telling you about what has happened in the past few days. Two nights ago, Altec, Captain of the Guard, captured a drow spy. Under interrogation, the drow revealed a very disturbing plan. He claimed to be working for an evil crime lord. Supposedly, this evil crime lord magically teleported this drow into the city to spy on the lords of Waterdeep. For what purpose, we do not yet know. This evil crime lord did not have the capability to teleport the spy back. When the drow spy tried to make his way back to his master, he was captured and interrogated. And that's why you were called upon and are now needed for a most important quest. We are not sure who this evil being is or what his intentions are. So we need you to begin your quest and find out anything you can about this crime lord. Once you find this evil being, it will be up to you to find a way to stop him from fulfilling whatever plans he has for Waterdeep. You are hereby granted full rights of passage to the city of Waterdeep and given full right to slay any who dare interfere with your mission while acting under the, under the name of the lords of Waterdeep. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a license to kill. Mind you this, friend. Your journey shall not be an easy one. It is certain to be full of danger. And you will most likely encounter creatures of all sorts. So be mindful of your surroundings at all times. Take this gold and visit Nebin in the room beyond. He has been given instructions to help you in any way he can. Yes. You have anything you would like to ask me? Yes, I do. Could you explain to me again who's, who's Kelvin? If I may ask, my lord, why me? <laughs> Persuade. 2,000 gold doesn't seem like enough money for such an important quest, my lord. <laughs> yeah, why not? Oh, he didn't like that answer. What is this world coming to when hired heroes start haggling with the Lord of Waterdeep like a common merchant? How much gold are you require? Yeah, let's see if we can get 225. 225 it is then, but I hope you're as good as they say you are. <laughs> okay, let's get away from him before we get turned into a badger. If he was going to turn us into a rat, I might have gone for it. So here's the nice, you know, one of the nice things right off the bat. If you play the original game, guess what? You're working with graph paper. You play this, you hit M. Here's our map. Pretty cool. We can zoom in on that, add pinch to it. We're going to be using that. Okay, he said something about a... Yeah, Nebin shop. This might be the only shop in the game as far as I know. You know, I'm sure at some point you get to barter with somebody. But don't get used to it. I'm Nebin. Talk a while if you will. Yeah, a lot of thanks to Sir Merchant. I guess we could try to get some and pump him for information if we wanted to, but I just want to barter. Okay, we can sell this woodsman outfit. We can. We got a magic bag. So right now I'm wearing the studded leather armor, and while it is quite studly, not the best. Copper, copper half plate. Padded armor, leather armor, studded leather, splint mail, and then a bunch of uh, there's a chain shirt. Scale mail plus one, full plate plus one. You know, I'll probably want to go with that full plate. What's the chromatic breastplate plus one? So that gives you cold, electrical, and fire resistance on top of a plus one AC bonus and a base armor class of five. 
And let's see the full plate. Base armor class at eight, though. So I'm gonna go with the. Uh, yeah, I think I could use my clerical abilities to give myself some resistance. So I'm just gonna go with a full plate. See, that's already brought my AC up to 20. Remember, this is the, in this system, the higher it is, the better. That always confuses the heck out of me. Okay, let's see about a sh better. Can I get a better shield? What am I dealing with here? A small shield gives me plus one. A large shield gives me plus two. Even I can do that math. <laughs> boom, bada boom, bada boom. Sell out. Okay, what else can I buy? Lesser belt of guiding light. Don't need that. Swordsman's belt. What does that do? It's a little bit of slashing resistance. Or a little bit of piercing resistance. Hmm. I have no idea which of those would be better. I wonder if this text is the descriptions of the items here. Is that something that Francis put in? Is this from Eye of the Beholder or is this just stuff left over from the, uh, the main game? I don't know. You know, I'll just buy the Swordsman's Belt. Here we got some bracers. Let's see. So we could get a plus one dexterity bonus, but again, if it's not an even number, that's not really going to help. Now again, another one of these confusing things. I know you can only have so much bonus. Somewhere here is probably a character sheet. Yeah, attack bonus. AC increased somehow. You know, it's just sometimes you buy like bracers and it doesn't give you anything. I'll just try it out. So let's see if it works. Yeah, see, that was a waste of money. I guess since my armor already has a plus one on it, I can't get another plus one from another piece. Never understood that. Clubs of concentration, discipline, plus three. Clubs of the rogue. Loves it alone, death. I think probably concentration would be good for me. Okay, aren't you having fun shopping with Matt? <laughs> Battle robes. Uh, what about weapons? Holy Star of the Dead. I can't even afford that. You know, this mace, I might be stuck with this mace. Oh, head crusher! Head. Oh, I can't afford head crusher. Are you kidding me? Ah! That sounds awesome. Wait, can I sell some? I want to sell my bag. Uh, yeah, I don't. Oh, that stinks. Wait, look at this gladiator's club. I guess I have to settle for this stupid old mace plus one. Man, I want, there's got to be some way you can come back. I wonder if those, I wonder if these recalls teleport you back to the portal of recall. I wonder if that brings you back here. Cause it'd be great to be able to buy some more of these these items. And then we've got a. Uh, I guess I could buy a ring, maybe. Same thing with these rings of protection. I, I've never can figure out if they will stack or not. I think a ring of protection will. Yeah, see, it's just this flexion modifier. And that's an armor modifier, see? See? And that is one of the ugliest stats of left, lesser power I've ever seen. I don't think I can really afford anything else here. Some pretty nice items. Well, I can get this this necklace. That says natural modifier. So if my theory is correct, this will stack. Boom. Okay. So I got that figured out. All right. <clears throat> Should we try to steal from this guy? <laughs> 
Probably not a good idea. There's a recall portal. How does that work? The magical portal will transport you to the last place you use your potion of recall. Hmm. I'm pretty sure once we get into the dungeon, we won't be able to come back here is my, what I'm thinking. We could test that out. Okay, we should be ready. Shall we go? Shall we go? Access to the dungeon is forbidden without permission. Well met. Oh, what the heck? Send me to the dungeon. Oh, man. I changed my mind. I'm ready to begin the quest. I knew you were no cobalt, Matt. I'm glad you've changed your mind. I apologize for my lack of judgment earlier. I am now ready to listen to what you have to say. What? What would you like to know before you leave? Farewell to you. Be sure to speak with Kelvin before you go. <laughs> Greetings, Matt. I am Kelvin Blackstaff. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> Please call me Kelvin. Everyone done. Now that we have that out of the way, I want to give you two potions of recall. Use them sparingly and only in times of need. Use a recall potion. Using a recall potion can save your life if you get into a tight spot. Or you may wish to use one if you have need of a lost key that one of your companions may have lost during your travel. You will find a Duplicate of the key inside the divining pool. Yes, yeah, this is starting to sound like the clutches they had to do to make the uh, the original game work with the Aurora engine. Well, who is Nebin? What can you tell me about him? Why would he care? <laughs> Goodbye, man. You know, this game's always the same. You're going to be totally engrossed in every character. Tell me everything there is to know about this. I talked to him. How do I get the permission? What do I look? Commission letter. Uh, maybe I have to talk to him again. No. Yes. There's something you wish. I don't need information. I was part of the Ruthum Luskin Wars. I have seen more death and bloodshed than most people will ever see in their lifetime. Uh, must work at Walmart. Uh, I will do whatever is necessary when the time comes. Yes, 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 yes. Who is this guy? I don't trust another's abilities or their skills so hastily. I need to know if you are the right person for the task. I need to be sure we've not put the safety of water deep in the hands of someone that is incompetent. I understand what you're saying. Is there anything else you need? I'm beginning to find you dull. <laughs> Even the sub-characters <laughs> are <Shall> yawning. <laughs> yes, get on with the adventure. What are we waiting for? What's the deal? I have to give uh, something to this guard here. City Dungeon. Unlock. Open. Oh my god, have we found a glitch or something? Why can't I go? Greetings and well met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is going on? Well, uh, hmm. We got two copies of this commission letter. I have to give it to somebody? How's that work? Well met. Let's talk to him. We talk to him. Oh, maybe we have to go through all these options. Take this key. Okay, there we go. So, when in doubt, talk to everybody, use every dialogue option. Help 
Excellent. So we had to reassure, I guess, Calvin that we're the right person for the job. Speak with all tech captain of the guards when you arrive in the dungeon. Inform him of your plan and tell him that I said it was all right to speak with the drow prisoner. Okay. Okay, I think we're getting close to the... Hold a moment. Here's all tech. He's the guy we saw in the opening movie. Hello, stranger. What can I do for you today? My name is Matt. The nine hells take my soul. The nine hells take my soul. What is what is it that you intend to ask the drow? He's asking a few questions about his mission. Yes, that makes sense. You'll find the drow in his cell. Uh, let's see. Okay, stay far back from the protection of the cell. Report back to me if you discover anything new. All right. Um, where is the cell? Court. Oh, so there's another guy we could talk to. Court. <laughs> what do you want, Dwarven Snort? What difference do it make me friends? They come for me soon, Snort. If, if I tell you, me gets into lots of trouble. Maybe friends kill me. No, no, me not tell you, Snort. Persuade. They won't find out. Failure. Very well, right yourself. So that's probably like the one spot in the game where having good uh, persuasion skills would come in handy. See a young dark elf. He is bleeding and bruised from all the beatings he has taken. Do you have a name, dark elf? You're wasting your time, dwarven. Dwarven? Can be dwarf? You're wasting your time, dwarf. I will tell you nothing. I never thought I'd see the day that a dark elf would be caught so easily. You must not be a very good spy. <laughs> Let's see. Lie to the drow and see if you are able to get more information. I can get you out of here, but I'm going to help. But if I'm going to help you, I will need a little more information. And I don't really like either of those options. I guess we'll try the second one. Well said. What kind of information is it that you are seek? What kind of information is it that you seek, Rivel? Mocking sneer. Tim, that's your master. I'm going to help you, and I need to know who your master is. Somehow, I sense that you are not being altogether truthful with me. Even if I did decide to help you, my master's wrath would be a hundred times more than anything you could begin to imagine. No, oh, you're mistaken. I don't wish to learn who it is I'm going to be working for. I see our next victim. What kind of fool do you take me for, Rivel Dwarven? Have it your way, Drow. Well, as expected, that was a waste of time. Let's see, a dwarf prisoner. <laughs> Those dwarves. Okay, well, we learned exactly zero of use. That drow is as stubborn as a mule. Must be going now. My thanks. Okay, I think that means we are finally ready for action. Uh oh. What happened there? to the sewer. Okay, yep. Into the sewer as we go. Oh, fighting a bat already. You know, a bat is only one letter away from a really cool monster. 
let's see. Can I go back? So right now I can go back here, so I could go back and sell stuff. Interesting. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe we just, uh... If you can go back to a vendor. That's the reason to keep your gold. At least pick up gold. Huh, of course, like right off the bat, I find better stuff than what I bought. <laughs> Get all this stuff. We got a amulet of divine favor, horribly misspelled. It's got. So it's like my necklace that I bought, but it gives me divine favor of level 5 two times per day. So that's a much better. Certainly a much better uh, item. Let's see, how do I equip that to my. Tecmo Cleric. How do I make that? Assign other actions. Barter, examine, no. Special abilities. Assign spell. No. Cleric. How do I actually use this? I wonder if there's a way I could put that on my hotbar. It doesn't appear to be. I guess I could try to do it that way. No. <laughs> Empty quick slot. You know, I know there must be some way to do this. Craft skills, taunt, attack, clear, remote. Custom special attacks. Oh well, I just have to remember I've got that capability. Then we got a short sword here, we can't identify. A dagger we can't identify. Okay, let's see. What is the button for quick save? Inputs. It's the key bindings. Change key settings. Here we go. Quick save is G. Dead bat. So already it's kind of fun to think about how he has, how different this feels from the, that first person perspective. And I guess you could sort of emulate a first person perspective with this engine, right? I don't know if you can just go straight up first person. I think you have to have a third person. That's a little bit closer, I suppose. Of course, when I play this, I always like to be far away so I can really get a good view of the whole area. That's undoubtedly going to affect some of the dungeon crawl experience. It doesn't feel nearly as claustrophobic. I got these bats down. It'd be interesting to play this for a while, then immediately switch over to the original game. Just to really get a sense of how that affects things. Kill that bat. You know, a bat is basically a flying rat. It's not that dissimilar. I think they're both mammals. Isn't a bat like a mammal? It's not not like a bird. Okay, blood stain. This is a pool of blood that lies on the ground. Further study could identify what kind of creature it came from. Unfortunately, my lore is too low. And by the way, just out of habit, I'm like light, uh, lying on my tab key to show me all the barrels and stuff. It'll highlight things for you. Gold. Amethyst. <laughs> I just love just to have all these barrels lying around. Oh, look, an amethyst. 
A diamond. Only those carrying the commission letter from the Warden of Waterdeep may pass. Man, all those options for like, I need more information, I need more information. Just go. You ever play one of those D&D groups and it's like, they just want to talk everything to death. Good lord, man, just get, give me a rat to kill. Uh-oh. That's familiar. Yeah, see, so now I can't get back. And I'm pretty sure we won't be finding another vendor for a very long time, if ever. Let's see, where's my character screen? What happened to my... I seem to have lost my quick bar. <laughs> yeah, it's just my quick bar disappeared. Well, that's not good. Let's see if I can reload. Sometimes this will do the trick. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's better. Yeah, so you can really get a sense of like how this how different this would be first person with a grid based movement you know, versus being able to get up and spin around whether it's more fun or not I guess we shall see okay there's another one of those recall portals this magical portal will transport you to the last place you used your potion to recall so maybe if I'd used my potion of recall back before I came through that gate, I wonder if that would make any difference. This is where this is where you will find a copy of the key where you find them on the level. You will only need this key if the game crashes with the player that had a key that was needed to open the door. So clearly, uh, you know, Rick and Rick and company have tried their best to make this work work around all the limitations of the engine at least as far as making an eye of the holder style game are concerned Got a couple of potions here you always get a little bit nervous in a game like this when you keep finding all these cure potions With that thought in mind, save! The door unlocks. Oh, that kind of scared me. A <laughs> dead worker. Oh, here comes some kobolds. Ooh, they can sneak attack. Nasty. Sneak attack. Might be easier to hit him if he wasn't on the other side of that huge stone. another one. You know, kobolds are basically just evolved rats, right? These look almost like lizard men. Come on. I might need to cast some spells. Oh, this is the kobold healer. Have a mace upside the head. Oh, he glowed when he died. No more. Yeah, there's all my rolls down here. It's always good to pay attention to this, especially if you're having a real hard time with a battle. You might see some, like, they might be resisting it or. forgotten to equip your item. There are numerous, numerous runes inscribed on the stone. 
The language is difficult to read, but further study could possibly reveal its nature. <laughs> Here we go again. Lore. Oh, succeeded. The language is kobold, and a warning to all who would enter. Keep out or die! Two exclamation points. Okay, well, I guess since, uh, I guess I'll heed this warning and quit the game now. Or I could continue on. So the nice thing about this game is it's it's pretty flexible with resting. You don't have to have this elaborate camp ritual. It's one of the things that, you know, it sounds like it's fun. You know, it starts off being kind of fun in the game like Pathfinder. Uh, Kingmaker, that or pool radiance for that matter. They, you know, you go to camp and <laughs> you risk all the random encounters and stuff. But, is it, you know, it sounds like it's fun. You know, it starts off being kind of fun in the game like Pathfinder. Kingmaker, that or pool radiance for that matter. I'll go ahead and get some spells going. Protection from evil. Let's go ahead and summon our little creature. And there we go. Now we're in pretty good. Fully prepped, ready for action. Okay. There's a search for trap mode here. Now let's see how I fare now that I got all this extra stuff. You know that my necklace had an item too. Let's see if we can activate that manually. Use divine favor. This doesn't last very long, but I think it gives me a pretty good. Let's see what it does for me. Uh, it doesn't specify, but. I know that spell is supposed to be pretty good. You know, I guess we could find out, right? Where's my... Uh... No, don't use it. <laughs> spell book? Is it in my spell book? Yeah, there we go. What does Divine Favor do? Lasts for one turn. A plus one bonus to attack and weapon damage rolls for every three caster levels. So it makes it easier. I do more damage and hit better, but it only lasts for one freaking turn, so. Time for a bit of the game. Not a very great. Basically, it's not going to last very long at all. I wonder if it's. Yeah. It might already have gone away. You really wouldn't want to bother with that unless it was a big battle. And see, already I'm wondering, is it worth picking up all this gold? Because I don't know when I'll be back to a uh, merchant. Alright, poke it in there. You know, I will say... At this point, this feels a lot more like Neverwinter Nights than it does Eye of the Beholder. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, if you prefer that Neverwinter Nights... Oh! What do we have here? <laughs> Dire Rat. Ooh, look at that. Challenge rating moderate. Dire rats are larger, more vicious versions of their common cousins. They can be found anywhere large rat populations exist. I'm liking the sound of that. Let's go get him. <laughs> oh, what is that? Color spray? What the heck is that crap? What kind of guy just kills some rats in peace? Stupid kobolds. Well, we did get to fight two dire rats. So I declare this game awesome. But anyway, what I was saying before I was so pleasantly interrupted. It feels more like Neverwater Nights than I have over. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, it's apples and oranges. You know, obviously, if you want to play Eye of the Beholder, you can play Eye of the Beholder.
small leech. Ooh, look at these leeches. That's a giant one. Hey. <laughs> you know you're in a... You know you're in trouble if the leeches are this size. Holy cow, man. Are there, are there any games that have, like, giant mosquitoes? That'd be pretty terrifying. Just a little mosquitoes irritating. Leech. I heard you could burn these leeches with a little cigarette. Okay, what the heck is this? Leech eggs? No point messing with these? What are we doing here? Oh, I got him with a critical hit. Oh, these leeches carry gold. <laughs> you know, I'd like to get to uh, some puzzles or something so we can see how well that translates. You know, pressure plate stuff. Here's another huge leech. You know, so far it's been very much in that fighting monsters, hacking and slashing. But you know, the other vital component of those Dungeon Master style games to me are the uh, puzzles. Let's get, get through this. Yeah, this is a completely different feel than the you know, Eye of the Beholder or Dungeon Master where you're like clicking on the attacks and more of a time thing. You know, this is more like you're watching, keeping a close eye on like your health, and deciding when you want to uh, cast a spell. In some ways it's a little bit more relaxed. It's a container. Man, I gotta get my lore up. There's a mace plus one there, but again, I don't think there's any spot here where I'm going to be able to sell. Also, if you attack the eggs, you get another leech to fight. Eight. And you're starting to get a sense of how long it must have taken. You know, how much work is involved in making this mod. I mean, he's for this team, you know, just laying out the levels would have been enough for me, I think. But... I have to admit, I don't know why I have the Beholder well enough to know like exactly how accurate this is in terms of monsters, monster placements. You know, that to me, it, not a big deal anyway. I just be wondering, does it capture the spirit of that game? I mean, if you really like Eye of the Beholder, you gotta like this, or is it apples and oranges? Now, both of those. I wonder if there's a key around here. No key in that bag. Todd's bones. Before you lies a complete set of halfling bones. Yeah, I seem to recall this, right? We gotta raise the dead, raise them from the dead. Object is not a valid target for the spell. Well, let's see, reload that. Todd's bones, didn't you like resin from the dead and was a henchman? For an NPC? Man, it's just been too long. Maybe I gotta put it down on the ground first. Halfling bones. Yeah, there we go. Todd uphill. Uninjured. I'm not quite sure how it is I'm down here. You say I was dead? Take it easy. Take it easy. Easy, little fellow. I found your bones lying here and decided to resurrect you. From the looks of your bones, the rats have been gnawing on you for a while. Do you remember what happened? What's that? You say I was dead? That can't be. 
Last thing I remember was falling down into one of the sewage drains and then waking up here with you. You know, I think we've all been there. From the look of your bones and the dried up blood, I'd say about two months. But you look okay now. Ha ha ha! You're a funny little guy. Are you sure you're up to the task of a rogue? I mean, I wouldn't want you to accidentally set off a trap and kill yourself. And possibly beat. I mean, he's, he's only just falling down sewer drains. Of course, he's a wonderful rogue. Hey, that's not funny. I'm a serious adventurer. I've been charged to complete many important quests. Perhaps you could find use for a skilled rogue in your party. I'm not too bad at picking locks, opening doors, or detecting traps. In fact, I come from one of the finest thieving guilds in all the water. You fell down a sewer drain! Don't say. I may be small, but I'm very skilled in the roguish ways. <laughs> Todd looks around the room with then, and then looks back at you. And besides, what other choices do you have besides me? Okay, enough chitter chatter, get the guy in a party. I guess you could man they're making they're like hammering this the guy can open locks in trap chests okay why not yes get into my potty you will not regret this my blades are yours to command okay so now we got a little a little henchman oh, I'm really wishing I had some extra gear for this guy you think his is this does he have better uh, lore than I do Actually, can I even click on him? How do you look at his inventory? Uh, but, uh, huh. You know, maybe I can't. Can I give him items? You can only give, you can, you may give only potions to your associates. I can give him a potion. You're telling me I can't... Wait, here we go. Let's stop and chat. I want to adjust your equipment. Okay, so I have to talk to him. Okay, Todd's armor. Wow. Okay, so that's probably better than anything I could have given him. Plus three armor. Heck. He's got kukris. A necklace. I wonder if you can identify items. Doesn't look like it. Okay, well, do I have anything else I could give him? Don't think so. Oh, still pretty cool. And it's just like just to rub it in that I wasted my money on this amulet of natural armor plus one. You know, of course, he's already got one. All right, so now we have a little a henchman. Okay, so maybe... Oh, where'd that guy come from? Okay, it's open from another location. So, obviously, we have missed something. Must be a key or something lying around here. Wait, where does this go? Upper sewers north. What am I doing? Come on. Well, this part feels kind of like Eye of the Beholder. You know, like, how do I get through that? You know there's an area over there. There's a door. It says I gotta get to the other side. So then you gotta like look at your map. In this case, I can just look over here. Otherwise, you'd have to graph all that out. Make your own map. And try to figure it out. But again, you know, some people, that's the whole point of the game. You know, I, I did a little tweet poll. And ask people like what games they had mapped out, and there's a lot of a uh, lot of responses. Attempt to translate the writing. 
some kind of web there. My guess is there must be some spiders coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and rest up, I think. Now I've got a henchman. I could cast some spells on him. Go ahead and do my little morning routine. Make my toilet. I always thought that was a weird expression. Make my toilet. Like a euphemism for taking a dump or something. Make my toilet. Okay. I wish I could find some more of those rats. Leeches, so I have to do. Man, these cookies are glowing red. They must, they must be. Some... What do those things do? It's got some pretty good effects on them. Busy to talk right now. There's a mage remain. Studded leather armor. Another raised dead spell. A magic wand. Alchemist fire. A large shield. A corpse. I wonder if I could raise him from the dead. No hell, why, why don't why not try? Let's just see what happens, you know. I got a just picked up another raised dead spell. I'm not going to use them for anything else. Oh, where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Inventory. I thought I did. Yeah. No move. Yeah, raised dead. Here we go. You know, I should give him the those tools. Let's just stick to the task. Oh, nothing happened that time. That's weird. I wonder if his bones are just... You know, I did make a point of saying, like, Todd's bones were fully intact. Maybe these mage remains are not intact. I'm going to try it one more time just to make sure. No. Yeah, I guess there's just something, something special about tile bones. Look at this crate over here. Ooh, a rod of resurrection. Now I believe, uh, I believe a rod of resurrection is a lot more potent than a raise of dead. So let's again say. was a long all right let's try this rod direction out on the yeah it cannot be brought back from the dead okay so we want to reload that I don't want to waste my rod of resurrection now look mage we tried everything we could just cannot get you up Man, it's killing me that I got all this stuff I can't identify. I knew that was going to be a problem. Okay, let's see if I can get those tools to him anyway. He's got some potions on him. Here, have some tools. These are just cookies plus one. They got an enhancement bonus plus one. 
Okay, enough messing around. Okay, we need to get down that tunnel. Interesting. I don't see a... Is this a secret? Turn on my detect mode. Must be a secret here somewhere. Curious, sir. I'm curious, sir. I don't see anything that looks like a plate. Somewhere, though, there must be some secret way. Hmm. Well. Looks like I should be able to get through there. Yeah, I guess that just ain't gonna happen. Haha, <laughs> gotta figure that out. Well, what else is there to do? To level one south. Here's this weird sign again. Can't translate. Oh, the language is COBOL. The sign says entrance. What's up with this? Let's have at it! Bash that web. Entrance to what? What is going on here? This must be like a secret cobalt. Uh. Okay, well, I definitely can't get through there, so enough of that. <laughs> Death comes to us all. There's a blocked door to water deep. It's pretty cool that I was able to resurrect Todd. Okay, what else? Must be a secret here somewhere. Break up all the eggs. Time for a bit of the game. Good experience points for doing that, but talk about a boring activity. You know, it sounds like I can hear like a door opening. Maybe it's a sound puzzle. Wait, did I, did I look in this? Large shield. Gold piece. Okay. And there's a lot of trap chests in this game. Probably die more from trap chests than anything else. Uh, just a nice plus one. There's some more skeletal remains. You know, I kind of feel like if I could resurrect somebody, we at least have a name there. Door has been barred from the other side. Can I bash it open? No. So that is really not going to happen. So it's barred from that side. And I can't seem to get around from the other way. 
so what? Wait, look at that. Aha! <laughs> there are pressure plates. Okay. Okay, that didn't really stand out. It's not tabbing. It's not highlighting. Okay, so you can't rely on that 100%. Okay, so all we have to do, I think, is just drop a little item on top of that. Put that torch on it. In theory, anyway. Maybe I gotta get Todd off of it. Oh, come on. Is it a time thing? It's not giving me any info. Okay, I definitely heard a door open. When you step off, I hear it close. So I gotta have to put something down there, I think. To... Oh, come on! Drop the damn torch. You got to be right on top of it. Okay, that's probably how you do that. And let's see what it opened. You know, that's the thing about. Dungeon Master, Eye of the Beholder. When you when you have a puzzle like that and you figure it out, you feel pretty good about it. You know, sometimes those pressure plates, you put something on it, it's like a gravity thing. But sometimes you have to just run real quick. Now oh, there's another, see there's another plate right there. That open that, but I need to find some other object, I think, to keep it open. Let's see, so let me try that little technique again. Just drop the dagger I found on top of it. Bada boom, bada bing. Man, I'm such a genius. Oh, and I leveled up too. <laughs> How sweet it is. You know, now it's starting to feel more like Eye of the Beholder. I like the way they implemented that uh, that pressure plate. That was good. Now I'm not sure if somebody hadn't played this kind of game before, if they'd have been able to figure that out. It's not really that. A little tent in here? Why would you need to make a tent inside a sewer? Uh, let's go ahead and level up. Oh man, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to get really tempted at this point to do like a level of Paladin or something else. What am I, three levels of Cleric? The only choice is question is, would I want to do a level of fighter or a level of paladin? I mean, the paladin and the cleric are pretty close. The cleric gets d8 hit die. So basically the choice, I guess, I'd be able to get... Some kind of spell casting divine ex paladins. So basically, I just get more hit die, and I guess whatever the special abilities are unique to paladins. I can already turn undead. Uh, fighter, I could use all simple and martial weapons, all armor and shields. Yeah, you know, just just to play around with this. Let's just see what happens. Let's just say I did this this paladin. Okay, I still only get one. Same class skills. Okay, so yeah, I get some feats now. Now I might still get the same stuff if I did the. Uh... Oh, so I get lay on hands right off the bat. Level multiplied by the charisma modifier. And see, my charisma sucks very low so I'm not going to get very good use out of that immune to disease adds a charisma bonus to all saving throws yeah I think that's actually negative one
Let's just say though I was wanting to do this. Let's see what it recommends. Power attack. Yeah, that's a good choice. Okay, you get divine grace, divine health, lay on hands, power attack. The only problem is I got a negative I got a negative two for charisma, so he's really gonna suck as a paladin. I'm just gonna undo that. You know, if you're gonna do that, you need to be thinking about having a higher charisma from the get-go. If you just stick to cleric. So I still get at least one feet, I guess, at this level. And it recommends something called combat casting. The character is adept at casting spells in combat and does not suffer the standard negative four penalty to concentration checks when casting defensively within four meters of an enemy. So that probably would be a good choice. What else could we do, though? You know, one of the... Yeah, here's power attack. I could do power attack as a cleric, too. Which I actually think it would be worth having. I don't so much use the power attack itself, but later when you get the cleave, and that lets you attack more than one enemy, it's really nice. I always get it. I'll go ahead and take it. Then I think I need to add that to my bar here. power attack mode. Okay, I guess Todd hopefully leveled up himself. Pretty sure he levels up himself. Another mace plus one, remove disease, another amulet. And even with lore two, I still can't identify any of this stuff. Okay. Let's play on a little bit more. See where we can get to. There's that door we couldn't open. See some. Oh, some more data rats! <laughs> now it should be even better. It's power attack. Is the power attack on automatically? Let's see. Did the power attack work? You know, sometimes I notice this is like keeps deactivating. Um, let's do another battle and really pay attention to it. Bugs, hey. attack. Yeah. Oh, Todd. Todd's killing a lot. Cool. I can't tell if that... Is this activated, deactivated? That's a short sword? The hell kind of short sword is that? Doesn't say that it's magical. Uh, now here's a pillar. Uh-oh. I kind of just wanted to look at it before you just press the button on it, but okay. Goal meth. Oh, this must supposed to be a boss fight. Near death. Yep, yep, please, you know, kill Gulmet, please. I make bargain with you if you spare my life and I will give you a magical item. Please don't kill me. The Cobalt Leader Blagion makes me guard this room for humans. Accept item and let him go, or kill Gulmet and take the item anyway. <laughs> I guess it's red, because it's probably, like, evil. Your leader is part of the reason I'm here. How about that item? Lagion, want to kill all humans. He is mad. Oh, I don't know. Take this ring. Help it. Now off with thyself, Cobalt, before I change my mind. So apparently gave us a ring of protection plus two. Okay, well, that's nice. That, and it does work. Very, very nice. 
learned that there's some crazy cobalt leader here somewhere called Blagion. Another potion to recall. Some darts plus two. I guess I might as well take those. Nothing down that way. Looks kind of like a cross. Dogs. I notice some of my spells have worn off. Still got damage resistance going. Yeah, when you kind of put it in this sort of mode, it feels a little bit more like I of the beholder. If you scroll back like this, it feels more like Neverwinter Nights. To me. I see a huge leech in there. Aha. Man, Todd doesn't wait around. He just rushes in. Man, the truth, he's pretty badass. I like those red golden kukris. It's cool. So it does look like I have to activate one. Yeah, it says power mode activated. You think this would just toggle on and off? See, it deactivates at the end of combat. There might be a way to like permanently set it. I don't know. Uh oh, chewed up bones. Journal notes of Wintley Kelso. According to the city sewer layout, some of the doors require a constant flow of water to the pressure plates to remain open. Once the water stopped flowing over the pressure plate, the door would have closed to prevent backwash. That sounds like a puzzle! Forever. Okay. Where is this? Oh, this is that door that wouldn't open. Right. Okay. Good. It's always nice when you can open up a dungeon a little bit, make it a little bit easier to get around. These pressure. Is that something about valves? Sounds like a valve puzzle to me. Oh, I see an infected rat. Let's have at it. Infected rats. Activate power mode. Yeah. Ah, infected. Look at that son of a gun. Ah. Rats are known to often carry and spread disease. This one looks like it's carrying about a dozen such ailments. <laughs> oh, it's like the Black Plague rat. Yeah, it's dead now. Killed it with my mace. Yes, Matt killed it. I wish you could just tell Todd. Todd, if you see a rat, just back away, man. <laughs> oh, man, here we go. The stupid jelly. Okay, good. Matt can kill it. Yeah, it's about to say, I think it absorbs the damage from my mace. So it's a good thing I got uh, Todd around. I was playing this with... Um, my, my my friend, we didn't have the right kind of weapon. And we actually died here. Pretty much have to have uh, some fire. That's probably why they give you those acid flasks and stuff like that. I don't know if it's acid or fire, but... Here comes some rats. <laughs> Look at him go, man. That's a good looking rat, too. Yeah, look at him. Good animation on that. A good job. It's already better than Neverwinter Nights original campaign. Time for a bit of the game. Yeah. Yeah, does it get any better, folks, than romping around a sewer, whacking rats with mace? 
you know, that's just like heaven for me. <laughs> Somebody said, Matt, you're easy to please, you know. I don't need a bunch of fancy stories and, you know, political infighting or whatever it is, you know. Seems like for modern fantasy you had to have like incest and dragon people, I don't know. If there's got to be like 16 different character arcs going at all times. Like, just give me a rat. <laughs> yeah, maybe a dragon at some point, but save that for like the end game, right? I, I want to spend some time killing rats, slowly uh, upgrading my gear. Oh, look at that kobold. A little quality time with this halfling. You know, the one thing I'm, I'm kind of wishing that they had in here is... Uh... Oh, look, this is Blagion. He's that... Yeah, he's that boss. Okay. Wow, yeah, he's killing my characters, too. Let's see if I... This would be a good time, probably, to use Divine Favor. Let's go ahead and use that. I'll use it on myself. You know, does Divine Favor, is that just one character or two? You know, one annoying thing about this game is when, if you cast a spell or something, it doesn't automatically resume your attack. Where the hell are you going, Todd? Got another unidentified shield here. Okay, well, we killed that guy. I want to get dark all of a sudden. Uh, but, I, you know, it was, it's, the music is the same as from Neverwinter Nights. I don't know. I guess they couldn't. Yeah, there he goes. Automatically picking the lock. Love it. This item beholder... Man, I'm actually not sure off the top of my head if it's, if it's got good music in it or any music it must have at least some music this in the cutscenes is a bit of a strain. cloak of fortification what does that do gives me saving throws and under the deflection modifier and let's take a look at uh, Todd's Sad. gear Do you have anything with a deflection modifier? Natural. Yeah, I think he could actually use that, that cloak better than me. Yeah, so it gives him a point of AC, which is nice. I have the beholder. Does it have music? I will be right back. I gotta find that out. And the answer is. <laughs> yes, it does. At least the Amiga version here. I saw it was, it was like a Nintendo one. So, 18 minutes of music. That's good music. But I guess they uh, couldn't use it for this game for whatever reason. Probably a licensing issue. Maybe they just didn't want to mess with it. That would have been something cool. Would have made a little bit more Eye of the Beholdery. You know, swap out the music. I think it said my... I'm encumbered, I thought it said. Well, maybe if you got to identify some of these damn shields. Uh, I guess I'll give Todd some stuff to carry. I hope he doesn't actually try to use the shield. Yeah, we'll give him all these short swords. I'm actually not sure if we ever get more, uh... You know what I could do instead of that? These magic bags. And yeah, that one takes off 40%. This one takes off 60%. You can actually put stuff into these bags. It lowers your weight. Yeah, 
us and now I'm down to 101. So that should help. You know, music to me just makes a game. It's an important part of a game a lot of times, especially a game like this. If you have that perfect music, you know, you just kind of mentally associate it. And then, you know, years later, you hear a little bit of that music and you're just right back. <laughs> right back in that game. Of course, there is something to be said for no music. Then you could just play whatever you want in your playlist. Oh, shit. Oh, I should have rested before I went in here. Yeah, definitely should have rested before I came in here. Yeah. Get a lot of... I don't know if they're getting sneak attacks on me. Looks... Yes. Sneak attack. So Todd is just sneaking attack. <laughs> sneaking all over the place with his attacks. That's good. Probably be even better if we had a our badger back. I have to look up and see what the rules are for the sneak attacks, but I'm pretty sure it's he's getting attacked by somebody else. And if, if they're attacking somebody else and he comes up, he gets a sneak attack on him, right? The trouble is, they're always facing him. Okay, let's see if we can. Can't rest yet. There we go. Well, I think we're about maybe two hours into the game, somewhere around there. I'll go ahead and finish up this uh, level we're on, I think, and then we'll try to give you some over more overall thoughts on it. Ooh. Man, all these things I can't identify. The level two sewers. Okay. There's a button there. Let's make sure we get crates. Oh, look at that sword. Hey, that's a great sword. Too heavy to carry that thing around. A little too heavy to be toting that thing around. What are these thieves tools? I don't know if that guy can use them. always a problem in this kind of game. You don't really know what it's worth carrying around and what you can just dump until much later and then you're like, oh man, I should have carried that, should have had that. Wait a minute. Okay. I think I've searched. There's still a door over here I haven't been in, but let's go on inside here. Let's see, probably have to push that. Oh, I see another pressure plate over there. What's that pressure plate there for? Oh, I don't know. So let's drop a little something on top of it. And I feel bad, like, dropping legitimate treasure on it. Uh, let's grab one of these daggers or something. Indeed. Oh, come on. That was like a... Yeah, there we go. What's this? Missing stuff. There we go. Little dagger. That's what I was looking for. That on the spot. Dump. Not sure what's thumping. What the hell? Get through the door. 
we're going to level two. Middle sewers east. Let's see where that put us out. That's a totally new area here. Hold up there. This road is a bit of a strain. Yeah, we get a lot of stuff here. Look at this. Fenwick, though, he's a named character. It makes me think maybe we can res. Let's see, Tom of Help. To activate the wall button, you have to right click it and choose the bash option while a throwing dart is equipped. Warning, do don't choose the use option or you will run across the pit falling through. Do don't choose, okay, which one is it guys? <laughs> and then throw your dart at the wall button target causing the floor to close. We changed the original wall button target because it was always hostile and the companions would always run across the open pits. So definitely a little bit of break in the third wall there if they have to, I suppose. Well, let's see if we can res uh, Fenwick here. I'm pretty sure that name Fenwick came up earlier. No, that didn't work. Can't bring him back from the dead. Okay, let's load our game. You know, there for a second I thought we might be able to get a third party member. I want to be carrying around all this heavy equipment. Uh, yeah, that could be such so heavy I might not even be able to... I remember this, like trying to shuffle your inventory around. Yeah, so it can fit. Yeah, see, it's just too heavy. I'm gonna drop it. Still way overweight. Some armor there, but I can't. Can't see what it is yet. Okay, just barely. That. So what's all this about a wall and a dart? I need to redo my spells. Creature back. And you know what? I think when I leveled up my cleric, I didn't even look to see if I had new spells, man. Oh, now we're up get straight up zombies. Kill these guys and see if <laughs> flesh. Zombie mutant. Reanimated through necromancy. You know, some people don't like to use necromancy in these games, but I always enjoy it. I mean, who doesn't want a little zombie of their own? Well, those guys blow up? Damn. They, yeah, they do fire damage when they die. That's nasty. Nasty business. I guess I'll stop picking up all these arrows. Let's go back in here and see if I can... Uh, look at my spell book. Now look at this, I got a whole other tier of spells. And I think all these, uh, you know, bull strength, etc. is one hour spell, so those are great for uh, prepping. I get three of them, let's do one bull strength. Let's see, endurance. That increases constitution by 1d4 plus 1. I guess that's bear's endurance, but they left off the bears. <laughs> for whatever reason, but a good spell to have. We get hold person, we get lesser of a spell, we get lesser of respiration, always a good spell. Resist elements. Oh, I definitely want the better creature. So let's take that summon creature two and I'll get rid of this summon creature one. 
Oh, there's a lot of good uh, options here. You cause the target to gain... You cause the target undead to gain a plus three natural armor class bonus. Interesting. So later on when I get animate dead or whatever it is, I can use that to toughen him up. See, searing light. That's a damage spell. Undead. 1d8 per caster level to a maximum of 10d. Also works on constructs. So that could be really effective on a particularly tough undead target, but it's just a single target. I think I might be better off with that uh, endurance. And let's do another little bless. Bless is a great one. Go ahead and take that. Okay, looks good. Cannot rest while there are enemies nearby. I guess there's an enemy nearby, so let's go back up here. Still enemies nearby. There we go. Now let's explore a little bit more of that other dungeon. I want to see what this uh, wall dart is all about. There we go. Now let's explore a little bit more of that other dungeon. I want to see what this uh, wall dart is all about. Now let's explore a little bit more of that other dungeon. I want to do less, have that handy. The bar is already getting kind of messy. You know, another nice thing though is all these spells, like every every time I level up, they last an additional hour. Even bless you know, gives you more than. I don't know how they translate turns into time off the top of my head. I know it's not very long. Yeah, I probably should have cast some of this on Todd. <laughs> Just thinking about yourself. You know, I just remember playing this back in the day in the Neverwinter Nights games, and eventually. Especially if you have a big party with all these prep spells. You know, every time you rest, it's like, you know, 30 spells. <laughs> it gets to be kind of unmanageable. Okay, there was that. To correction facility. Alright, so apparently that goes to the correction facility. What a nice euphemism that is, huh? Corrections facility. There's a lever there. Before I go pushing levers, let's see what else is here. What the hell? Oh, I fell! Ouch! Well, that wasn't nice. Well, I guess I'm in the corrections facility now. Powder kegs. Before you is a small wooden keg. It appears to have a small wick similar to a candle coming out of the top of the barrel. What do you wish to do? Pick it up, ignite it, do nothing. Interesting. So I could try to blow out that wall, I guess? Huh. I don't know what's up with this hanging skeleton. I can lock it? Why am I dealing with a hanging skeleton? There's a torch on the ground. The sewer is level 2. Okay, so I guess I can just get, go back up. So there's pits. <laughs> That's confirmed. Oh, and it didn't tell you like where it was either. Is that it? 
Oh, look, there it is. Duh. How do I get across there then? Huh. It's been a sliver. Yeah, I bet it's timed. How much you want to bet that's a time thing? Across the open pit, you see what looks like a button on the wall. You think for a moment and wonder if this button will close the dreaded pit that lays before you. Aha! Uh -huh. So we want to equip our dart. Right. There you go. Another puzzle solved. Yeah, so, yeah, this is definitely enjoyable. He says as he realizes where's <laughs> my base go. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, that's my base for a second. Yeah, so I'm loving the way that, that they're, you know, making these puzzles using the Aurora, Aurora engine. You know, that couldn't have been easy. Yeah, there's a pressure plate. Oh, don't go across there. Drops dagger of ritual. Probably don't want to drop that. Oh damn! Let's drop a copper ring. Oh look, he disappeared. Into that. Weird. Dead cleric. Another pressure plate. Okay, so I see how that works. What am I supposed to be doing in here? Just some, there's another floor lever. Tor deck. Yep, yeah, it's open. There's a battle axe there. Tyrant Fog Zombie. I wonder who this Tor deck is. What happened to Todd? He must have fallen down a hole. Look, Tor deck. Ooh, Potion of Lore! Should be able to use that to identify those items. Yeah, should I try to raise my charisma up a little bit more? Nah. Just gonna keep working on lore. Yeah, and that should have given me some more spells. Cure moderate or cure serious. That's 3d8. That's 2d8. Uh oh. I'm trying to turn undead. Man, I wish I knew where Todd was. This isn't a good time for him to be taking a break. Yeah, he's trying to poison me. It's just since I'm a dwarf, I've got a certain resistance to poison. Thanks a lot for your help, Todd, wherever the heck you are. You probably fell down a pit. Ooh. Mace of Disruption. That sounds cool. Bonus versus Undead plus two. <laughs> what I'm talking about. You know, that extra point of strength did buff up my uh, carrying capacity quite a bit, so I guess that's done. I guess that's done by uh, straight up linearly. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't. 
pit has closed. What pit? Okay, I think we've about done what we can in there. Oh crap, bunch of zombies. Where are you, Todd? I guess he's back in that. I guess I gotta get upstairs before I can reunite with him. Handy dandy turn undead. That works really well. Check out that mace of disruption. It's supposed to do extra extra good on undeads. Run down. the way those things blow up. I guess that's pretty much guaranteed damage unless you got some serious fire resistance going. Oh, I... Some kind of trap. Trap on that. Negative energy. Well, at least it wasn't like a curse or poison or something. You know, some of these games, you, if you bash open a chest, you can actually lose some of the value. Man, what's this sound like? 100 hit points? There we go, finally, Jesus. Oh, I forgot about my potion of lore. There's a dire mace there, but I can't use it anyway. Yeah, let's try the uh, potion of lore. There's a shield of dawn plus one. Gloves of animal handling. Oh, it's already wore off. Man, that sucked. Now what about a Shield of Dawn? Base armor plus one, plus two though versus undead. So that might be a little bit better than my shield. Yeah, I like the little bonus. Looks like it didn't affect my AC. Okay, well I think we probably played it about enough to be able to say some things about it. I'll wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's see if I can get back to Todd. Oh, there's that pit there. Okay, I'll do that. So that doesn't affect that pit. Yeah, this is the part here that really feels like Eye of the Beholder. Okay, so that opens the pit behind me. Okay, and then I can go this way. Alright. Man, what's up with that? Look at that crate. Oh, my jar of oil. Where'd you come from? I've been hanging out in that barrel. Hey, Todd's back. <laughs> okay. See in the barrel too, waiting for me? Or maybe he was hung up on the other side of that. There's a silver key. Another rod of resurrection. Alright, good. We need to heal him up, though. He's in bad shape. Poor Todd. Okay, let's kill the rest of these guys.
Poison there here. Nauseates you. Yeah, he must have been on the other side of a of a gap. Still can't get across there. Well, as far as I can tell, we've pretty much explored all of this. It's closed. Oh, wait a minute. I see what... We got to get across there. Okay. Now oh, I get it. I see. I see. Okay, but that did not open that one. Open that pit. Probably need to drop something on that. Let's just see them before we go messing about. Okay, I can't get across. Oh! Get across there. And I can't get across here. Okay, where was that pressure plate? Go, 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 do, do, go, go. Pressure plate. Pit has closed. Okay, that closed that pit. Didn't close that one. Oh boy, and I'm getting poisoned this whole time. Great. Well, there's something I'm missing there. Pretty sure I only saw one pressure plate. Could be we need to drop something on top of this again. on top of it. That'll be heavy enough. Okay. Not actually sure that's making any difference. And both of them are still... Oh. I'm going to have to rest here pretty quick or we're going to die just from this poison. Let's see. Go ahead and rest. Can we rest? Yes, good. Fully powered back. Yeah, that was a long rest. Okay, so it must be maybe that pressure plate. Yeah, that closes that one. Then we can just rush across. Now nah, we're back. There we go. Okay. So that takes us to the corrections facility. And we're starting to get into some tougher fights. Half-eaten corpse. be a pretty disturbing thing to come across, wouldn't it? All right, we lost. We used our silver key to get in here. Only the strong shall pass. Apparently he is not strong enough. Wentley Pelso's journal, book one. When our guide read rats, R-A-T-S, he ran in terror. We had to track him down and drag him back. The city map claims that RATS, R-A-T-S, stands for Rapid Access Teleport System. I wonder where it would teleport you. Oh, man, this is the classic. Classic. RATS. I opened it. I opened it somehow. 
I hope there are some rats in there too, though. It's just a legend. Skeletons, skeletons. Ooh, look at it. It's got like a flaming spear. I might need that flaming spear. Can't wait until I get cleave. Yeah, see, this is a problem with the Aurora, Aurora engine, I think. Just, my guy's just standing there. You have to, like, click on another enemy. You never quite know when he's just going to freeze up like that. I really wish it would just automatically attack the next target. Sometimes it works, sometimes it gets out of combat somehow. That's not just this uh, mod. I mean, that's Neverwinter Nights. It's a problem with the engine. Magic staff. What is that corpse? It's coming to the remains. There's a tower shield? It's a bit of a I found another shield. I'll oh, quit opening the barrel. <laughs> and where the heck is Todd? He keeps going away. What's he doing up there? Oh, he's fighting something. Oh, he's got a nasty little fight here. I haven't prepped any of my spells. I always kill the priest first. Hit him with that turkey leg. Definitely, a, it's more than one skeletal priest. Man, that's a tough fight. You leave Todd alone for a few seconds. All right. Let's see about this tower shield. Uh, of course, I can't identify it. And there's a magic staff. Oh, I know. You know, a while ago I thought I just at one point of strength I added it made, <laughs> made me able to carry more. Of course, it's the spell I cast on myself. Bull strength. You see, now I can carry up to 173. I think bull strength is slightly random, right? Yeah, 1d4 plus 1, so it could be up to 5. So, you know, if you really wanted to min-max, I guess you could memorize several of those. And try to get the best result. That's a bit more trouble than I think it's worth, though. Casting all my spells. Dire boar. Okay, let's see if we can get to a good stopping point here. You know, this game is addictive as hell. There's something about it. Just, every time you feel like, okay, I'm about ready to stop, you just impulsively want to like explore a little bit more. You know, this, the original game's like that too, of course. It's a very hard game to just play a little bit of and stop. You're just always tempted to keep going. You look up at the clock and, you know, two hours have passed. You're like, what the hell? I know I haven't been playing. There's another one of those puzzles. You know, I know I haven't been playing that long. Uh, where's my darts? The old dart trick again. Bash. So that bit, you know, that'd be a bit hard to explain to somebody what it is you're trying to do there, I guess. But uh, you know, this is where they're having to work around the, uh, you know, the people that made the. Aurora engine, they were not thinking about <laughs> this kind of puzzle. But, you know, it shows you the versatility of that engine that they were able to, probably with not all that much uh, 
You know, I don't know how much actual coding they had to do to make something like that happen. Looks like they would pretty much work around uh, the engine itself. You know, this just works with the, with the Neverwinter Nights game. I didn't have to install any additional modules or hacks or anything. So it's pretty, pretty clever. It's pretty innovative. A little bit of a clutch, but not too bad. Man, Todd's about to die. Todd, what the heck, Todd? Oh, I didn't turn anybody? Oh, there we go. I better heal up. Can I get a better healing spell? Oh, for some reason, I don't have all my spells memorized. Oh, it's a zombie warrior. Yeah, he's a bit of a tougher. You know, just like Eye of the Beholder, it's a lot of it's heavy focus on the undead. You know, undeads are always pretty good. Pretty good adversaries, I find. You don't feel bad about killing a skeleton. <laughs> it's already dead. <laughs> You're not doing anything to it that hasn't been done already, you know. There's more of those clubs of animal handling. What is it? Apparently they expect you to handle a lot of animals. I'm finding those clubs everywhere. Oh, okay, I get it. So when you look in the barrel, these zombies pop out. Alright. Splint Mail, Morning Star, Jar of Oil. What is a jar of oil? That sounds like a quest item. Probably used for squeaky door hinges and anything else that's not working. Yeah. How much you want to bet there's like a. Why are these guys glowing red? How much you want to bet you have to use that to get through a door at some point? Okay, anyway, I think this is as good a spot as any. Uh, so what I think about this game, I... Well, I mean, it's Neverwinter Nights, so I'm not really reviewing that part of this. You know, I've already reviewed that, and I've all, also already reviewed the original Eye of the Beholder. Uh, so I'm just strictly looking at uh, this work here that Rick has done, Rick Francis and uh, his friends. Uh, or fellow fans, I guess, uh, on this mod itself. How well does this mod in and of itself hold up? But I think it's... <sighs> Let me put it this way. If you like Eye of the Beholder and Neverwinter Nights, I mean, you can't go wrong. You're, you're going to have a good time with this. Uh, I have played the co-op mode uh, with, with a friend, and that to, that really you know makes everything better when you're playing with a good friend. And, and that'd be pretty difficult to do with the original game. I mean, I guess you could technically do it some kind of couch style and, you know, make it work somehow, but uh, <laughs> it's probably not going to be as smooth as this. Uh, so, yeah, we've been playing the co-op mode and had a great time with that. Uh, solo player still holds up pretty well. You know, I enjoy exploring. Uh, it's an apples and oranges thing to some extent with uh, the two games, you know, the first-person grid-based movement and all that's doesn't exactly translate 100% here, and I don't think that's really even the point of this. You know, these are different styles of game. Uh, if you wanted to, if you prefer the Neverwinter Nights style, the Aurora engine, which you just missed out on Eye of the Beholder, and you'd like to catch up on the story and all that, all that stuff, and you like the puzzles, you know, clearly, uh, you couldn't go wrong here. I will say, though, the problem is you, you can play the first game, the second game, but the third Eye of the Beholder is not available as a mod, and apparently they've run into some pretty serious technical challenges there so that might never happen <laughs> uh, so basically you might have to play that third game uh, in the original format regardless but, uh, you know I, I think it's there's plenty enough game here to justify the cost and you know it's just a lot of fun coming back to this Aurora engine with some fresh content that's not really fresh you know it's, it's kind of like scratching a lot of nostalgia 
<laughs> it just all at once. It's like I'm back in the Aurora engine, which is fun. And I'm also back in the Eye of the Beholder universe, which is even better. Uh, so to me, it really nails that. Now, of course, it's a mod, uh, community mod. So there's, you know, you've seen there's some kludges. You know, a lot of spots where they're basically like, look, you know, we get it. We had to do it this way. We're just going to tell you how to get past this uh, because of the realities of the engine and whatnot. So that's a little bit clunky. I don't, it doesn't really bother me. You know, I think the positives really outweigh it. You know, it would be nice to have some specific music. You know, the, some of the Eye of the Holder soundtracks I was playing. I don't know why they couldn't. Uh, probably some type of copyright issues is my guess. As to why they just went with the original Neverwinter Nights, but you know the other stuff I, I've seen, like that opening cutscene was great. Uh, you know I think they've done as good a job as anybody could do. You know making that Eye of the Beholder game and, and modding it for use in the Aurora engine. I mean, if you could do it better, go ahead. <laughs> you know I saw some proofreading problems. So what? You know you know big whoop. Uh, I'm an English professor. If I can put up with it, you could put up with it. <laughs> uh, but overall, I think they're, these guys are really should be commended for the for the hard work they've done. And, you know, I would go so far as to say, even if you haven't played Neverwinter Nights or Eye of the Beholder, uh, you might enjoy this and, and find it fun. You know, a lot of people they didn't like Neverwinter Nights because of that original campaign. Well, you don't have to do the original campaign. You know, you could just launch. Uh, Eye of the Beholder, one of those other community mods. You might actually have a better time doing that uh, than with the original. Uh, so I'll leave it there. You know, you get, I think this is, I'm pretty sure this is just free uh, in the latest Neverwinter Nights patch, which, you know, I'm pleased just that they're still patching this, making updates on it. You know, the game came out in 2002. You know, you got to give Beamdog credit for keeping up with this and supporting the community like that you know unless your company wouldn't even care about the community mods you know they would just let those guys wither on the vine and just only the hardest of the hardcore or whatever even i've heard about this mod uh, they're not doing that you know they're out there incorporating it celebrating it which it just that's cool <laughs> you know so thumbs up just for that uh, but anyway go ahead pick this up if you i'd love to hear from you especially if you're a fan of neverwinter nights and uh Eye of the Beholder. You know, if you played played all the way through the Eye of the Beholder series, I'd love to hear what you think about this adaptation here, this, this modding effort. Uh, but I'll, I'll go ahead and stop it here. And uh, as always, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> and I'll be back in a minute with the news. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I do, uh, you know, hope you'll give this game a go. Uh, also, let me know if you try some of those other community mods. Uh, the, uh, the Reptile God certainly looks good. You know, I'm, I'm very tempted. I'll probably explore that in a future episode. I don't know if I'll do it next week or not. And I'll just say, you know, I was originally going to do Mecha Jammer demo uh, for this video. But, uh, well, for one thing, this uh, Neverwinter Nights patch came out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kind of uh, put I put everything else aside to uh, explore that, uh, but uh, the demo was only available for a limited time. I did not realize that, and just you know shot right past the uh, expiration date on that. So now I'm just going to have to wait, I suppose, <laughs> until they do uh, either put the game out or do an early access or maybe release another demo. Uh, I don't know what their plans are with that, but uh, you know, sorry for those who were really uh, looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully you didn't make the same mistake and you were able to get the demo and try it out on your own. Uh, if so, do let me know in the show notes what you think. And as always, I want to thank you very, very, very much for your support of the show, for supporting Mad Chat episode 407. We're almost to 500. <laughs> you know, there would be like two episodes if it hadn't been for people like you uh, stepping up to the plate and saying, you know, I like this guy, I like this uh, show, you know, these are my people, uh, this is my stuff, you know, this is, this is the community that I want to belong to, uh, I really want to support these efforts, uh, I'm going to click the link in the show notes to that Patreon site, I'm going to give the guy a buck, uh, you know, I'm going to give the guy a buck a month, uh, maybe you might want to go two bucks, <laughs> uh, maybe you don't want to do the uh, subscription model and just say, here's, you know, uh, 12 bucks, I'll see you next year. You know, however you want to do it, whatever's convenient for you. I'm not trying to break the bank. I'm not trying to, you know, extort money from you. Nothing like that. 
uh, just whatever's handy and whatever you're comfortable with. I just want you to know I appreciate it. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we do have a new uh, Ratron, Dr. Numbers. So welcome to the pack, Dr. Numbers. Cool name. Uh, I like that. I also have a, a serious message here. Uh, this is the tribute sent in. And you know, this is something I would like to do. Uh, you know, so if you're a, on the Patreon side or just a fan of the show, just, you know, a community member of Matt Chat, you, know, you can feel free to send me uh, messages to be read on the show. You know, I, you know, I love doing this kind of stuff. The community, uh, giving back, you know, to the community is always a great thing. Uh, and this is a tribute to Vagabond Knight Alexandra of Antonia Bale of EverQuest 2 sent in from Gotrick. Uh, so we're very sorry uh, for your loss, Gotrick, and as well as, you know, her and her family. You know, we are in support of you and wish everyone uh, the best in that uh, rather sad, you know, situation. Uh, you know, what more can you say? But, you know, I appreciate you sharing this with me as I'm sure that the uh, Match Hat community mourns your loss as well. Let's see. Uh, what about that news from the Matt Cave? Oh, that news from the Mad Cave. You know, <laughs> this is pretty cool stuff here. So do you, have you ever played a game? Uh, you know, I think I might have it here somewhere. I don't know. It's probably here on one of these shelves. It's, it's called TIE Fighter. It's a Star Wars game uh, that came out. Uh, when did that come out? 1994 uh, from LucasArts. I mean, if you played it, I'm sure you remember it. I'm sure you love it. Uh, if you're just now hearing about it, well, it's your lucky day. Because uh, what someone has done, you know, kind of like with this uh, Eye of the Beholder game we've been playing today, it's a total conversion. Uh, they, so they've taken that original, uh, let me make sure I get the details right, Angel TFTC um, has released the eagerly awaited TIE Fighter total conversion, the original classic 94 TIE Fighter game from LucasArts, um, converted for the 1999 X-Wing Alliance engine. A complete overhaul of the game from graphics to gameplay. Thirteen battle campaigns are there. Training missions have been ported over. Eight reimagined battle campaigns, taking advantage of the much better XWA engine, and imagining how TIE Fighter could have been had the technology of time not limited it. And that was on uh, Indie Retro News. Also got a yeah, who told me it was telling me about this. Uh, might have been Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Lops Terminator. <laughs> you know, I just I had already found it, but then somebody else had pointed me to it as well. So that's when you know you got some good news, right? When people are multiple people are telling you about it. Uh, but anyway, definitely check that out if you're a fan of Tie Fighter and or uh, what's this other one? X Wing, X Wing Alliance. All right, the second item uh, you might have uh, remember way back somewhere in the most deeply buried synapses <laughs> of your brain, <laughs> uh, back to high school maybe or earlier. Uh, when there was a game called Dope Wars or Drug Wars, you know, people were playing this on their uh, pocket calculators, uh, TI or scientific calculators rather, uh, Texas Instruments. Uh, back in the, since you're back in the 90s, I don't seem to remember it being earlier than that, but maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, anyway, uh, I could have learned more by reading this article from Wired's Zach Huffman. Uh, he tells you all about the history of this game, uh, the people that made it, and how people have uh, updated it ever since and are still playing it. Uh, now on their phones. So it's kind of fun. It went from calculator to the phone. You know, it's, a, it's on the web. It's a browser game. But anyway, it's just kind of fun thinking about this stuff. You know, I can remember being in high school with my little uh, calculator watch. You know, on my, uh, of course, I had the TI-99. <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. And just thinking, how cool would it be, you know, if I could do like a quarter of the stuff that we could do so easily on these phones. You know, like watching a movie. Uh, on a little screen like that would have been truly amazing, uh, much less all the apps and all the crazy stuff we can do. I mean, I just don't think sometimes uh, we don't fully appreciate how far we come and how fast. Uh, and then finally, Jeff writes in. He got a couple of items that were interesting to him. One, uh, one is called Kansas Fest. Now, do you like the Apple II? Uh, did you grow up with an Apple II? Uh, you're part of that community already. Maybe it's just something intriguing, you want to learn more about it. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be, you should check out this site about Kansas Fest. It's a July 
It's an online uh, convention, July 23rd, 23rd <laughs> through the, then I can't talk today, through the 23rd and 24th, two-day event, uh, the world's only annual convention dedicated to the Apple II computer. And vice hobbyists, retro computer enthusiasts, diehard aficionados together from all corners of the world for $10 only. And Jeff uh, says that, <clears throat> amongst others, Becky Berger, Becky Heineman will be there. I mean, I would, <laughs> who wants to miss her? <laughs> yeah, so definitely check that out. Yeah, that's going to be fabulous. And I'm sure there's many, many other uh, great people there. You know, names you might recognize, but sometimes it's more fun just meeting other people like yourself uh, that are really into, uh, you know, this community and collect a lot of fun stuff. You know, I just love, uh, you know, hearing from other people that are really passionate about the same stuff I am, whether they're famous or not, you know. <laughs> okay, and that's uh, about that ale of the week. Almost forgot that, man. Can you believe I almost forgot about the ale of the week? Well, we can't have that. Uh, so I've got one that I brewed called Bavarian Hefeweizen. This is another one out of the uh, mid Northern Brewer collection. You can buy the recipe and it comes in a kit and pretty much everything in there. You select what kind of yeast you want. Uh, there were a couple options for this one. I decided to go with the liquid yeast, which I believe, you know, I probably should have wrote, <laughs> wrote it down which one I used. Pretty sure it's this Y yeast 3068 uh, that I went with. And it's got uh, wheat malt syrup and wheat dry malt. So they kind of mixed those two together. That was kind of interesting. And then they've got a Hoptimus Rex premium hops and other flavors, a German Tetnang, I think is how you pronounce that. Uh, and a lot of people like this recipe because of the quick turnaround time. You know, it's basically two weeks and you, you're ready to keg it and uh, good to go. So I've had it kegged up now for about well, probably about a week, you know, to get probably actually probably more like about a week and a half in there. So it should have a really nice, uh, really nice carbonation going by now. Uh, so on anyway, I want to get it into this uh, drinking horn here. I'll put a little bit more into a glass and we'll see what it's all about. So I thought you guys might like to see this. This is my new dual, uh, you know, uh, dual tap uh, keg system. <laughs> and what's great about this, you know, when you had the single tap only, you know, you use up all the keg and then you got to put the other keg in there. Uh, but that takes, you know, a week to carbonate. You know, meanwhile, you got no homebrew. Uh, and that's not acceptable. So you, <laughs> I think at a bare minimum, if you're serious about homebrew, are you going to want to get a two, a two tap system and then to go with this. I'll, I would show you, but it's kind of clunky uh, messing around. But you can buy a little splitter thing uh, so you can run your... Uh, your CO2 into that and then split it up however many times you want, two or three, you know, depending on how many taps you have. I went ahead and got the three uh, port version so I could also have a, a keg sitting outside the, uh, the kegerator. But just to get a little bit of carbonation on it, you know, before I actually want to uh, put it in here and refrigerate it. And that way I figure I'll just have a, you know, continuous stream of homebrew no matter what. <laughs> as long as I have the, uh, the energy to, uh, you know, to brew it. Uh, but anyway, this one's the one with the this Hefeweizen, so let's see if I can get a good pour here. You know, I'm just a one-man operation here, so I don't know how well I'll be able to film this process. But just look at that. You know, I can already smell this just delicious, you know, homebrew. Ah, that just smells really good. But anyway, let me get out of here and back into the real... Uh, uh, Matt came so we can do this proper. Back with this Bavarian Hefeweizen. And you know, I was thinking or wondering, like, what is it about home brew uh, that makes it taste so much better uh, than stuff you can buy from the store? And I realize it's a bit subjective. You know, you take pride in something that you uh, brewed yourself. But I actually th thought about something different than that, and that's the water. Uh, you know, if you're like me, I drink tap water all the time. That's the only water I drink. I make tea, coffee. You know, it's always that same water supply. And St. Cloud here is actually well known. They've won uh, prizes for the great tasting water. So I think it's something about, you know, using the, the local water uh, and brewing it. You know, it just, you know, it kind of connects everything up and it, it sort of uh, localizes it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you go out and buy a beer, you know, who knows where that water came from. It's probably very different tasting water than what you're used to. Uh, anyway, that's just kind of saying uh, maybe what makes homebrew good is that it's using water that you're familiar with uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so maybe it's part, partly that 
um, similarity, I guess, that, uh, that helps with this. But, <laughs> you know, I will say one other thing about homebrew. I mean, I could go on about it all day, folks, but uh, it's the weirdest thing. Right when you keg a beer and you're, you know, you're waiting for that carbonation to take place, and you'll start to pour it, and it'll be a little bit flat, and then it'll be just about right, but it just won't taste very good. Uh, you know, it tastes okay, right? But for, for some reason, and I haven't been able to figure this out, you know, as more and more days go by, uh, it tastes better and better. <laughs> and when you're like near the end of the keg, that's like the best tasting beer uh, of the bunch. You know, so I know there's different ways you can make it so that your keg is only taking the brew uh, from the top of the keg instead of at the bottom of the keg. You know, there's various contraptions. You know, I just kind of like to leave it as it is, though, because I always like to save the best for last, you know. Uh, so this really gives you something to look forward to. And if you just uh, put a new keg in and it's already tasting pretty good, then you're like, man, you know, in a couple of weeks, this is going to be superb. Uh, anyway, for God's sake, let's give this thing a, a smell. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit congested. I don't know if you could tell that. But man, this just smells like straight up classic Hefeweizen. Any of those, the best Hefeweizens I've ever smelled. You get that, if you're not familiar with this uh, style, you might have tried a Blue Moon, let's say. Uh, kind of like, I, I kind of think about it like a citrusy, kind of almost an orange, maybe a tangerine like aroma to it. You know, like you had a big handful of, uh, you know, you're just eating some oranges and you know, you're sniffing your hands, that real uh, sort of uh, citrus oil like smell. You know, that's what this smells like with a little bit of a peach you know, on top. So just a really good aroma. You know, some people don't like the smell of beer, but that's just because they're, you know, the only thing they've ever smelled is like a Budweiser, Bud Light, and you know, that sort of soggy cereal-like uh, aroma. Totally different. You know, so if you don't like regular beer, try a half of Weizen sometime. Uh, you might be surprised. But anyway, let's give it a taste. Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, good stuff. Um, I'm not going to say, I wouldn't say this is the best Hefeweizen I've ever had, simply because uh, I'm a huge fan of the of the style, and I've probably tried hundreds of them, and, you know, I'm not going to be deluded enough to think this is going to come <laughs> rival those. You know, some of my favorites are the, uh, oh, God, what is that? Uh, well, I like the Hitoshino uh, from uh, Japan. Uh, actually, actually, a really good choice if you ever come across that. Uh, but a lot of the, uh, God, what's the one I'm trying to think of? It's uh, out of Canada. Uh, I'll see if I can find it and put, it, put it in the show notes. But, the, you know, there's several that are, uh, there's a lot of competition out there for really good Hefeweizens. But I'll give this another taste here. Now, I will say, uh, this one's extremely refreshing. It's uh, very crisp. You get that uh, citrusy taste as well as the aroma. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, with a half of bites and you don't want something really thick, you know, it's not really, uh, you know, to me, this style is more about a kind of a hot day. <laughs> you want something a little bit lighter uh, or thinner. Uh, you want the flavor, but you don't want like this, you don't want to feel weighted down, right, uh, on a hot summer day. I mean, you, you're already weighted down by the heat and the humidity. Uh, yeah, so that's where something like this really, uh, really shines. Now, I'm not really tasting any... Uh, if there's alcohol in this, it must be low or, you know, mask really well with the, with the hops and the, uh, you know, the other flavors in there. Uh, it just tastes really good to me. A little bit, you know, it's just the right amount of sweetness here. Uh, you know, if I had never tried a Hefeweizen before, I'd probably think this was amazing. <laughs> you know, my standards are so high with these. You know, I'm going to just uh, I'd say that's probably on the high end of the scale. You know, if you want to say A, B, C, D, I'd probably give this like an A minus, you know, simply because of, again, there's so many great Hefeweizens out there that I've had the uh, privilege and the pleasure of trying. But man, you know, just for something you can brew in two weeks, you know, two weeks and you're drinking this, I mean, uh, no brainer. Uh, of course, I should add, it's two weeks to brew, but then you need it. Remember, at least a week uh, under pressure, or if you're going to do the bottling, I think that takes another two weeks. So <laughs> who wants to wait another week? You know, get the damn kegerator. Okay, uh, let's wrap it up with a quote. And 
this is, I want you to see if you can guess who said this. I'll give you a hint. It's somebody who has written lots of great novels about drow or dark elves. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you already know who it is. Uh, but the quote is great. It goes something like this. Nostalgia is a necessary thing, I believe, and a way for all of us to find peace in that which we have accomplished or even failed to accomplish. At the same time, if nostalgia precipitates actions to return to that fabled, rosy painted time, particularly in one who believes his life to be a failure, then it is an empty thing, doomed to produce nothing but frustration and an even greater sense of failure. Of course, that is a quote from the legendary R.A. Salvatore, one of my favorite authors. Uh, too many to mention here, but of course, Legends of Drizzt <laughs> uh, being among the best. And Crystal Shard, I mean, I can go on. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and see you next time. Mmm, <laughs> you dirty rat! You killed my brother! You dirty rat! Mmm, <laughs> woohoo!